Hi all, I have yet another amazing game of Leela Chess to show you. This is against Boots 6.3.1 in the Chesscom Computer Championship Rapid Rumble Stage 2. In Stage 2, the first four uh, ply half moves are given actually. So let's see d4, d5, c4, and Leela is forced to play the martial defense, which hasn't got the greatest reputation. Uh, after c takes d5, you might remember I mentioned that knight takes d5 is like a poor Grunfeld. There's nothing to take on c3. Now, Leela is pretty clever here and actually doesn't recapture with anything. Just plays g6. And in fact, White already doesn't seem to appreciate a knight being on c3 ready to be taken to cause structural damage so we're in greenfield territory now which is highly respectable uh chess opening and i wondered if white could try and exploit this position uh, by not playing knight c3 trying to avoid greenfield transposition uh, if we have a look at knight f3 it seems black just waits and say white plays something like e3 we could end up with a situation where, in a situation where b6 is played, followed by bishop b7, and white's without a move really. Uh, white has to move the knight at some point. It seems it's starting to be a bit silly. You know, b3, they might be taking a knight f4 if the bishop's really thin chettering. So if the knight at some point is going to move, if it goes to d2, then knight takes his fine here. So it seems maybe the martial defense just waits after is the is the best policy which Leela has played so she's just transposed it really into a really quality world championship approved opening it was used with good success by none uh, you know by by Gary Gasparov against Anatoly Karpov he switched to the groom field when he was doing a bit badly with the uh, Tarash defense so we have a, a really respectable groom field and in fact we even follow a super GM stem game here for quite a while. So bishop g7, bishop c4. So this is Karpov Kasparov uh, territory, and with knight e2. So any pin is f3. We have c5 here. White castles knight c6. It's very very standard territory. B6, really nice idea. Uh, an alternative is bishop g4 which looks like Karpov Kasparov territory. Uh, this kind of thing has been seen before. And in fact, there's even an exchange sacrifice, which has been played by many, many players. We get a really dynamic, aggressive line here, which actually has been, it, it might be a dynamic quality at the end of this particular example. But yeah, there's a well-trodden line there with Bishop G4. However, we have B6 here, D takes, and now, yeah, a structural damage gambit. <laughs> that's the thing here black uh, is offering a, a gambit pawn avoiding the exchange of queens now usually white does play knight d4 white doesn't go in for another pawn you might wonder why let's have a quick look c takes a takes so it's like a structural gambit uh, if you look at white's pawn structure there's a backward pawn there there's a c4 square is very nice for black as well the a files obviously nice the bishop's really quite nice Black is actually really comfortable. If we have a look at knight e5 here and knight c4, this looks like black's got a lot of compensation, uh, you know, enough to justify the pawn. This kind of position, black's got a really beautiful, harmonious uh, piece positioning. So that's actually not played. C takes is not played, being a bit greedy there. Rather, knight d4. Now we have knight e5, and the queen is actually working well with the knight on h2 in this line. Knight b5, you might think this is crazy. Queen b8, because isn't there bishop d5? Uh, now the bishop is hanging, so you know, f4 knight takes. <laughs> so bishop d5, which seems to be winning the exchange. On f4, uh, sorry, on bishop f4, by the way, uh, the problem is b takes hits the knight so any bishop d5 this is a really fascinating line queen takes bishop takes bishop e6 threatening to equalize at least with queen takes f1 but black can even do better than taking on f1 with e6 
and then queen c6 so keeping an eye on the rook and also hitting e4 and also an idea of knight d3 on rook e1 so this is really good stuff for black because actually black ends up getting a load of compensation uh, for the exchange uh, getting getting the exchange back so a really fascinating line here uh, off the bishop d5 yeah this is just equal uh, to just get back the exchange immediately uh, so yeah it's it's really fascinating stuff behind the scenes here so anyway bishop d5 was chosen and this is a really fun line knight g4 threatening checkmate so g3 knight takes e3 and i wonder this is like a, a really mysterious uh exchange sacrifice now here believe it or not there is a really high level stem game in this variation even from from this position uh Vachia Lagrave, Maxim Vachia Lagrave, MVL, was playing white against Boris Gelfand, no less, in Tromso 2013. And they had this exact position, and Boris Gelfand played a6, and that game went bishop takes, check, bishop takes f7, knight d4. Here, this is a very, very sharp uh, thing. Uh, rook b1, queen f7 threatening mate, bishop e6, probably the only move to stave off d takes yeah really sharp position which ends now in a perpetual check so that's a really sharp stem game there high level in this line but the super gems might want to take a look at what uh, Leela plays here not a6 but actually bishop h3 we have now uh, rook f2 on bishop takes a8 uh, bishop takes f1 hits the knight by the way so not too many options queen takes this position black has a small edge look at why it's pawn structure it's really smashed uh so in fact even though blacks are pawned down you could say that yeah black's doing really quite well there so rook f2 a6 bishop takes a takes so yeah um it is an exchange sack but there's a lot of compensation here we have e6 Bishop c6 and now bishop h6 so I thought this might be the idea this bishop without the counterpart hitting e3 it seems white's pieces are being pretty tied down to nannying the fractured pawns uh, for me you know the Grunfeld I don't like the nannying of central pawns and I particularly don't like the, the nannying of the remnants of a pawn structure which is now diced and sliced into a number of <laughs> doubled and isolated pawns as is the case here with black having the bishop pair we have bishop takes b5 on queen takes yeah that leaves behind e3 and so this is just better for black uh, after this this is actually winning if white plays that badly as well but the whole the whole thing is is better for black there in general uh so we have bishop takes b5 queen takes yeah there's a lot of pawns to hit here. Rookie one, yeah, White's just putting the gloves up. If this was a boxing match, Black's now delivering like a series of punches, basically. Uh, Bishop g5, this makes way for the possibility of h5, h4 now. Bishop c4, h5. Uh, we have king h1, rook d8. Bishop b3, queen e5. So looking at c3. Uh, and e4 more critically white counters by hitting f7 that is protected uh, now rook c2 so white's really just putting the defense the defensive gloves up to all these attacks on rook c1 uh, then, the, then there's bishop g4 and the queen is forced to leave e3 that's no good black's just getting a big advantage so white has to be really careful how to defend these pawns rook d3 piling the pressure on rook f2 queen c7 rook c2 yeah and now we have b5 uh the immediate bishop g4 here there's queen f1 hitting the rook now this scenario turns out to be okay for white uh so we have actually this b5 this calm b5 <laughs> and actually 
yeah, white's pawn, white hasn't really got the c4 pawn break here in this particular position, believe it or not. White plays rook c c1. You might think, well, why so passive? Why not liberate in inverted commas? Liberating here, unfortunately, liberates this diagonal as well to queen a5. And this is really awkward because that rook has got a limited career at the moment, nannying e3, and it can't really handle this uh, distraction. For example, here, bishop g4, and then bishop takes e3, and now things get extremely nasty here because uh, <clears throat> h4 is remarkably uh, possible. <laughs> Believe it or not, even the, look at this. The rook in this remarkable variation is is left hanging to two pieces. On queen takes d3, there's bishop f3 checkmate. So you get the picture uh, why this is uh, not too hot. Uh, I think a similar thing we can basically force with <laughs> queen takes e1. <laughs> Uh, bang checkmate so yeah this c4 the liberation of c4 is just not on the cards here this is this is really a fascinating finding uh, for me about this game c4 is not on the cards because of queen a5 this is like yeah my my worst nightmares of the Grunfeld, but amplified <laughs> it's just black with the bishop pair just torturing every single pawn virtually and any point any point of liberation like your overload pieces that are nannying pawns are just it ends in a tactical disaster of some sort now here rook e e2 then there's check another tactical disaster because the, you know the bishop's helping you know checkmate there so, so uh, a lot of fun stuff there behind the scenes uh so anyway rook c c1 so white's just really again defensive gloves up t timid looking play but it can be explained queen e5 just sitting nicely in front of the, the double pawns hitting c3 again bishop d1 and instead of taking on c3 which may be plausible actually rook d2 uh, threatens all sorts of things and you might think the big threat is bishop g2 but actually there's even bigger threats here white plays rook e2 let me just show you the bigger threats c4 forget bishop g2 there's actually bishop g4 and this is absolutely destruction uh for example here queen takes e4 check bishop takes e3 check the bishops just come in for the kill basically and then we take on d1 leaving this check to be absolutely crushing winning d1 everything falls down like a house of cards which is a good series on netflix by the way yeah uh uh I know Kevin Spacey's got a bad rep, but I'll recommend that. But everything's falling over like uh, a, 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 a house of cards here. I should stop using that expression. But yeah, it's just falling down. Uh, Bishop g2, um, queen takes g2, rook takes this this position. Uh, queen b2 check. Um, and black's just getting a big advantage. So, okay, rook e2 is a necessary defensive move rook d7 on bishop g4 here this is also well it's similar to the game actually where white's giving up the queen in the game continuation uh Lila does a bit of toying around here with rook d7 but then we go back to this position rook d2 now there's bishop g4 yeah white's already having to give up do something drastic so giving up the queen for two pieces h4 the thing is black is now carrying on attacking uh the dark squares on both sides of the board this is just really nasty stuff with the queen sitting on e5 g takes bishop takes e3 like an overlord this queen is overlording the, uh, the whole position looking at the whole position rook cd1 bishop f4 hitting h2 and also of course c freeze attack so white just give up gives up uh, a pawn here a3 we just take on c3 uh, and then it's it's just nasty you know taking on a2 black's going to get a big advantage anyway so yeah white's pawns are dropping they are dropping Queen c7. It's very difficult to sometimes defend. 
even if you're a top computer to defend a fractured pawn structure it seems so rook d1 queen c4 rook h3 king h6 a3 uh, if h5 g5 yeah why not just yeah go for advancing the pawns here instead of fra any fracture for black is not needed uh, so uh, we have a3 yes <laughs> it's it's not inspiring queen e2 rook b1 queen c2 rook g1 and now another pawn's taken the pawns are just being picked off uh, like apples falling down from a tree they're just being picked off the bishop now becomes the new overlord of the position <laughs> overlording both sides of the board uh bishop g2 yeah keeping the rook imprisoned to defend against queen h2 checkmate that's shielding at least that possibility but now this pawn seems to be the next victim or is it so bishop d4 here queen d2 nope so Leela was only messing around with a3 for a moment uh here this pawn is dropping the <laughs> queen queen takes e4 um after rook c1 so it seems yeah white's getting uh fed up <laughs> basically trying to do something else queen takes e4 h5 this is a big try this h5 but leader plays a very precise move here queen g4 on g takes remarkably this becomes a draw because of the check as if king g6 then there's rook takes f6 check and winning the queen winning and so if the king has to step back then it's uh, just a perpetual check time and that will be a, a real mess okay so queen g4 very careful move hg king takes rook c f1 f5 so can Leela convert this well the pawns uh, are pretty dangerous looking in the center and they're pushed here now yes this exposes an attack on the queen queen f2 we have here check the king goes here it's it was also possible to play king g5 it seems this position is is possible uh with uh, black having a big advantage okay so king e7 check check king here rook h2 queen g3 bishop e2 and now yeah the a3 pawn is taken actually <laughs> now so yeah uh Leela's won all the opponent's pawns all the opponent's pawns uh yeah uh here it looks as though the you know this this runs into queen g1 checkmate it looks pretty helpless this pawn is pushed just for fun over here and this one pawns are starting to bear down on white the weight the gravity of the pawns on both sides of the board so they're unable to take the gravitational pull of the past pawns and forcing white to lose a rook now yeah b1 is supported by the queen on g6 so yep the pieces start dropping off now after the the pawns were taken and white's past pawns that that is a stalemate trick avoided <laughs> quick queen e6 and yeah the rest is not too hard unless there's a disconnect there's not too much chance of Leela losing this checkmate so if you have a particular fetish for dicing the opponent's pawns or playing a structural gamut it seems the Grunfeld has great opportunities to do this this is a really fascinating uh, variation uh, to, to study actually from a structural perspective the exchange sacrifice for that lethal bishop pair here is is very very interesting and it seems as though this might be a good innovation for super gms to take note of so there's that major stem game to check out as well that draw uh, but there are a lot of a lot of other players have played this but that is the top one so i hope you enjoy that check out the pinned comments uh for all the variations if you want to play through as well and revise what you've just seen i hope you enjoyed it comments questions like shares appreciated thanks very much